Oh, check this out for an awesome snake. It's a beauty. Hey, buddy. Look at that. Fluoro green. A little Trimerosaurus insularis. This guy's from Bali. Beautiful snake, little pit viper. Amazing green colour. This species always has red eyes for some reason in Bali. And there's half a dozen, or more than half a dozen species in Southeast Asia of these snakes. They love hanging out in the bamboo. It's got heat sensing pits, so he likes to eat warm blooded prey. Species like birds. He'd take small bats if he can get them living in the bamboo or also in the strangler fig trees and he's an awesome climbing snake pretty much arboreal most of the time so vipers have got the hinged fangs they hinge out and they fold back in they've also got two little sheaths one on each fang now he's tasting the air with his tongue there He's got the elliptical nighttime nocturnal pupil there. So our green snakes in Asia that have the round pupil, not that you want to get that close, they're actually non-venomous. But with the elliptical pupil there and the heat sensing pit between the nostril and the eyeball, that's his little heat sensing pit, pit viper. Oh, check him out, what an awesome species. Now you've got to be careful when you're gardening and things like that because going through the bush, he relies on his camouflage but if you get too close sometimes they will strike. But you can see this guy here, he's not really being aggressive, he's just sort of sussing the place out. He wants to get out of here, he wants to be on his way. You see those beautiful belly scales there. A lot of the time they've got blue on them as well and they can be bright blue in some areas particularly in the Komodos. So, sensational camouflage. And he's got the white lip there as well. A lot of blue on the bottom of the chin. Now he is venomous, he's not regarded as a deadly species, however the venom is causes a lot of hematoxin, causes hemorrhaging and can also cause um, unstoppable bleeding. Whereas this guy here, there's, there's no fatalities from this species in healthy adults, maybe if you were an elderly person or a baby but highly unlikely the venom is not super strong however it does cause necrosis and most viper bites if they're from um, potentially deadly species like a Russell's viper or a Mojave rattler or other rattlesnake species uh, generally well the Mojave rattler is different because it's got a hematoxin as well as in a neurotoxin so that's probably going to be paralysis whereas a lot of our other vipers, like the Russell's viper and the carpet viper, um, it's renal failure or kidney failure. But you really got to be messing with these snakes or, or accidentally step on them or, or walk into them to, to get bitten by them. So, pretty cool. Now, the, the snake bite first aid for a lot of different snakes is not actually that much different. They say with viper bites, because it causes a lot of local hemorrhaging in the areas, that you shouldn't apply a pressure immobilization technique bandage like you should with a lapid species. So a lapids are using uh, pressure immobilization, and for vipers, you're not. Unless it was a Mojave rattler, you'd probably want to use a pressure bandage there because it does have the neurotoxin as well. So 
if the snake bites you, don't panic. 80% of species of snakes are non-venomous. Pretty much harmless to humans. So the best thing to do is not panic, relax, sit the person up, uh, keep the bite area below the, the main torso on the heart. If you're bitten on the leg, you want to keep your leg down low and sit up. If you're bitten on the arm, you want to keep the arm up. You don't want to elevate any of your limbs. And what you want to do is you want to get to the hospital. So call an ambulance as quick as you can or jump in a car. If you're only on a motorbike, stick three people on the motorbike with a bike victim in the middle in case he passes out on the way to the hospital and falls off. Not the best case scenario, but generally calling an ambulance. So a, a lot of Western countries, particularly Australia and America, have really good medical systems. In the States, there's only around six species that are considered a, a big problem with people and you've got good medical facilities over there. Southeast Asia, India and Africa, thousands of people are dying from snake bites every year and it can be complications even from viper bites months later like the renal failure or uh, really bad necrosis which is basically a wet or a dry gangrene and then that can cause amputation as well which is terrible so if you're bitten in Australia by a venomous snake or Africa you want to use the probably the pressure immobilization technique call for an ambulance or transport first to the hospital then apply the bandage then stop the limb from moving we want to stop moving around and stop the venom traveling through the lymphatic system into the torso and the areas where the major organs are Non-venomous snakes, you can just wipe it with a bit of alcohol. Uh, pythons, big python bites that actually rip you open or lacerate your skin, you definitely want to run those under fresh clean water for four or five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, flush it right out. They can have a lot of bacteria in their mouths, just like a cat bite or a dog bite, a crocodile bite, monitor bite, human bite. You want to flush those right out with fresh water and then put your, uh, your alcohol in there later or your Dettol, some type of antibacterial and then do the pain dance once again because it really hurts and then uh, yeah just monitor it if it's a big python bite and you've got lacerations you generally wouldn't stitch those like with the other bites that I mentioned you don't stitch those up because there's secondary infections will, will come back open and then That'll cause that to reopen and reinfest the wound. That's why the old wives' tale of the goanna bites reopen, or monitor bites can reopen every year, which is actually true. They can have secondary infections when your immune system's down and they can open back up. This guy's reaching right out. He's such a beautiful snake, it's, it's very tempting to just hold this snake. He's not being aggressive at all, he wants to get off that hook. But it's just not worth the risk rehandling a viper like this. You can see his beautiful little prehensile red tail there. This is going to be the fun part, guys. We're going to do a selfie release. Get this snake to stay on the hook. There we go. We're going to find a spot up here where we can release this guy up into the trees. Give you a bit of a demo of how awesome they are at climbing. 